Why I built banjos? Well, it all started when I met Richie Stearns in the 80s. I just loved the sound of his banjo. And I, I wanted a banjo like that. But finding an old Dobson wasn't easy, especially if you lived in Europe. So 14 years later, Richie gave me an old Dobson pot with the original tone ring. I was so happy. Now I could finally get the Dobson of my dreams. I built a neck for it and put it all together and it sounded really, really bad. Nothing like Richie's banjo. After a week of trying all kinds of setups, I decided that this pot was not going to do it. It had been damaged a little, so the only solution was to make a new pot. And I did. I made three banjos, each a little different, to figure out which construction gave the best sound. And this time they came out sounding really good, almost as good as Richie's, but not quite. Very close, but not quite. Now Richie's banjo had been played for a century, so I thought if my banjo got played that long, they would probably sound like his. I showed the banjos to Dirk Powell and Tim O'Brien, who were playing in Denmark at the time. They liked the banjos and Dirk wanted one. That did it. I was hooked. I wanted to make banjos. Banjos that had a deep round bass and a crisp and sweet top. I wanted to have them the whole range and I wanted it all to be pure tone. I believe banjos can be made to sound really beautiful with a sort of primeval sound that every human instinctively likes. But a sound with a sound that touches the soul. That's the sound I strive for. And when a customer wrote to me that the banjo sounded so mellow, his wife even liked it, I thought I was getting there. And when the late Ray Alden said to me, you're the first one to get that old sound again, I thought I'd done it. But some people found my banjos hard to play. By now, I knew why Henry C. Dobson made his banjos and his tone rings the way he did. I had figured out how the tone ring worked and how to make them sound just right. But I had to make the banjos more playable. Playable for anybody. And that was the next challenge. I had to think differently. For the banjo to respond to a softer touch, it had to be set up lighter. Meaning thinner strings, less tension. But in order to keep the volume, the pot had to be bigger. And a bigger pot meant an other shape of tone ring. Not only a larger diameter, but also another shape. A different shape that works on a 12 inch pot. So I designed a new tone ring. I made some 12 inch prototypes. It took me a year to develop what became the new classic model. Developing banjos is a continuing process. I get new ideas all the time. It's exciting and I love the challenge and I love finding the perfect solutions. So that's why I happen to make beautiful sounding banjos with a simple, elegant design that are easy to play. You want to buy one?